We are back in the shop. It is the next day. So about 24 hours have passed. We had a fishing charter today, so I had to get after that. But that's given our gel coat repair here plenty of time. You can see that's a really good match. It's hard to see the transition if I get in there really close. I think y'all can see those edges where we kind of blended them a little bit right there. We're going to be using a product that I have found super, super helpful when you're doing this kind of repair work. It's made by 3M. It's called a dry guide coat right there got a real neat little applicator pad it's like a graphite powder kind of a dark powder on this pad and you can apply this in a circular motion just like so and you can see now very prominently you can see our where our patch is where our repair is going to be so I'm also going to show you all a trick today. We're going to be using something else to kind of shape this up. I'm going to be using a standard razor blade, just like you would get at the uh, at Hello's or Home Depot. Nothing super fancy, nothing super special. And I'm going to use this. This is kind of one of our tricks of the trade to fair or shape this gel coat. And I'm going to be using this guide coat to help me see where to go. You can see here it's actually scraping taking some of the excess off showing me where the showing me where the highs and the lows are just like that getting these little shavings off of there works a lot faster than using sandpaper kind of kind of scrape one way I'm gonna scrape another way. You see, it is really taking a lot of material off of there in in quite a hurry. And you can really see where the low low is and then where the edges are. We're gonna to continue to take some more material off. Still see it's a little bit low right there. That's where that guide coat is working for you but we've really taken a lot of material off of there really smoothed it down so at this point y'all we are probably ready to put some sandpaper around a block probably some 220 or 320 is typically what i start off with um kind of the the nicer your boat is maybe even the finer you may want to go to 400 immediately then like 600 and 800 i've got some little blocks that we use when we're doing repair work. You can see we got some different sizes. This one I got here is about three quarters of an inch square by about two and a half inches or so. And it's kind of the right size for this size repair area. You don't want a block that's too big. You don't want one that's too small. If it's too small, it won't level the surface out. If it's too big, you're gonna be sanding in areas you don't need to be sanding. And we've also got a sprayer just a standard from Lowe's or Home Depot, just an industrial uh, professional grade sprayer. And we filled it up with water and we've added a couple drops of Dawn dishwashing detergent. We're gonna hit this with a little, hit this with a little water, clean it, moisten that. We're gonna stay right on the, the area that we filled. i change direction. We're working diagonally, trying to stay pretty tight on the repair. You can see it's really cutting that material. All right, you can see right here again this edge a guide coat really helps you see where you need to focus. Change direction once again. All right. 
right, so just like that, that was the first cut. We went with 320 on that one since we used the razor blade to scrape it off. We're moving on to uh, 400 now, and I've got two different size blocks. That's the original one. That's about a three quarter by three quarter. That's probably a three quarter by inch and a half or so. And I've just wrapped those blocks. You cut those widths wide enough so that you can block, wrap the block several times. And once again, we're going back with that 3M, the dry guide coat. You got a little applicator pad here. Sometimes you can turn it upside, upside down, get some of the graphite powder on there. You can see that black powder, powder and we're gonna apply this in a circular motion all over the area I've been working, the repair area. A little bit of soap and water, wet that area, and we are gonna start cutting with our 400. We're gonna go diagonally. You never wanna cut the whole time in the same direction. You wanna alternate alternate your cuts especially here on the bottom of this particular boat it is curved there's some curve right here this boat's got a complex curve to the bottom really want to pay attention to the contours change direction not sand the same direction all the time i'm going to clean off that block you can see how the guide code is again showing us where we've been where we need to go little bit low right in there. So there's one more step I may have left out. I just wanted to be sure we added this in is that I've got the advantage. I've got some compressed air here. I've got some ability to blow that surface off. And obviously after you've wet sanded that and washed it off with some of the soapy water, use some compressed air or a dry towel, or you could use a hair dryer or a heat gun just to warm that up. And every time you sand with a progressively finer grit, usually the area you've sand is gonna get a little bit larger each time. That's where the guide coat really, really helps. So I've sanded with the 400 and now you can see, I hope y'all can see that. There's a fairly large diameter area where I've sanded with the 400. And so I'm gonna come back in with the guide coat, the applicator, and apply that. And you can see that it, it shows more prominently in the area that I've been wet sanding. And that helps me know exactly where I have covered and where I have not covered. Otherwise, you're just kind of shooting in the dark. It's hard to know if you've covered that whole area thoroughly with 400 and then 600. 800, 1200 as you progress. So here we go with the 600 y'all. Again, I'm using a slightly larger block this time. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and focus on the area to be repaired there. I've got my water bottle again. I'm gonna wet that, wet that. You notice with the guide coat, we've gone out in a larger area. And I'm gonna start to do more of a circular cut. Circular cut can work really good. A diagonal cut. You just don't want to do the same movement over and over and over again. Notice I'm moving around the whole area to blend. All right. All right, so we got our blow nozzle, air hose. You can actually see it drying, wet, dry. And here we go once again with our application of guide coat. We're going all the way out to the edges. All the way out to the edges. This next pass will be with 1,200.
and you guys sorry about the compressor y'all <laughs> y'all may recognize this boat obviously this is my kenner the boat that i charter fish in and i do have another gel coat repair video you may not you may be interested in seeing we're actually repairing right up underneath right up underneath the keel in this area and you can find that you can find that elsewhere on our channel I'm trying to show a couple of different methods though y'all there's not just one way to repair gel coat and i'm going to try to show a variety of ways depending on what materials you have available ended that with 800 after the 600 and i've jumped forward to the 1200 grit you can see with the 800 we've sanded out to a fairly large area kind of going with the theme what i was saying earlier each time you sand out it's going to get a little bit larger put that back in the holder and we've got two different methods here y'all we've got the 1200 wrapped in a block and then i've also got a piece just folded on itself and that's going to be real flexible a lot of times at the very end i will use this style of paper application to kind of finish up so rather than on a rigid block sometimes i'll just take a piece fold it over upon itself and use it with your hand You can see there we're still shaping a little bit with the 1200 but at this point you got most of your contouring and shaping should be done so I'm going to contour and shape a little bit with a block and again the water really helps keep your water with a little bit of soap really helps keep things clean Helps keep your paper from getting really clogged up and a mess. But notice how I'm continuing to just move all over the place. Don't stay in one area. I'm trying to knock down all the guide coat. And continue to keep your sandpaper clean in the work area. That's one thing. about gel coat repair is it really gums up so now we're going to switch i'm going to switch to this style of paper that's 1200 i'm going to clean it we're going to use it for detailing some of these corners and edges up here really nice for feathering and blending Now this is pretty interesting again here you can see right up here you can see these are actually brush strokes from the previous repair the previous repair i did that with a brush rather than using a squeegee blade and the uh, guide coat really shows where you've sanded where you haven't super super helpful if you're using a brush for application all right Y'all don't need to see the rest of this. I'm gonna probably take about five more minutes. We're gonna hand sand this out and move right along. So we finished all the wet sanding with the 1200. And you'll see, one of the things about this guide code is it does show you where there's highs and lows. Now this is an area that we'd repaired previously, but there's still some residue of the guide coat. This is where you can take a cloth that's dampened with a little bit of acetone. And uh, what we've done is we're gonna clean that off. You see how easy it is to remove any of the old guide coat. So typically I would recommend doing that. See the difference, you remo removed any of that residue. I'm gonna kind of wipe down this whole repair job here with some acetone and it'll remove, if there's any of that guide coat and little nooks and crannies and crevices, that's gonna remove it for you. So you got good clean surface to work off of. And uh, we're gonna see if I can find some of the compound. Now what I typically like to use for compounding out, and I do have a real nice machine, like a variable speed, but I do like the 3M, the compound and finishing material, and that's a 0644. They also sell that in a gallon container, and that is the 0640. 
45. I have found these this product to be excellent. It's by far my favorite. 3M in general makes really, really good stuff. Of course, there are other compounds and finishing materials out there, but that is white. Um, it cuts really nicely and it cleans up really nicely. I have applied some of the compound to this terry cloth towel. We are going to just start rubbing that out. Circular seems to work really good. Kind of just choose an area. I would say about a foot square. Usually a good idea to begin with. Here we go. We're going circular. All right, y'all. So in an area of this size, it should take probably 10 or 15 minutes. I'm sure y'all don't need to see all that, but that's just a general idea. Circular motion back and forth, circular motion back and forth until you've kind of cleaned the residue off of there, and then we'll get ready to wax this thing. So we've hand rubbed out the uh, gel coat repair with the 3M finishing and compound material. And I've, all, I've done all that by hand, I've done it all by hand. But if you want to splurge a little bit, I'm going to show you all what I use. It is a variable speed. It's made by Bosch. That's a GP712VS. It's a variable speed. You can change the speed right there on the handle. And we're using, the pads are made by a company called Presta and they make different weights. So this one is the green wool and it's a light cutting pad. They make heavy cutting pads as well. And honestly, if you're gonna be doing any amount of um, gel cut repair, compounding and waxing, these little inexpensive orbital, electric sanders you buy at the uh, inexpensive you know the the big box stores not going to hold up very good you're not going to be very happy with them i've been real happy with bosch equipment dewalt also makes a really nice variable speed you're going to want one that slows down to 500 to a thousand rpms all right here we go Our uh, gel coat repair is coming along nicely. Most people would not be able to see damage was right in here, right in there. And uh, still got the wax to go, but that's looking really good. Now it's taking some elbow grease. Y'all's taking several hours. Gel coat repair is super expensive, but guys that know what they're doing, I grew up around it. I've repaired hundreds, maybe thousands of gel coat dings, but happy to share the knowledge with you guys um if you've got some different techniques or things you've seen done before or questions about how we're doing stuff i'm going to try to show several variations like i said i've got another repair video here on the channel we also got the new boat that we're building here behind us the big uh the big 29 foot custom hybrid bay of course the boat we're working on is my charter boat my good old kenner and uh, what we're going to do i'm going to go grab some wax I'm gonna put a coat of wax on here, buff this thing off, and we're gonna be all done. And the wax that I have found that I really like is the, it's the Colonite Heavy Duty number 885. It's the one that I really like, that's the Fleet Wax. Now that's like a heavy paste wax, and I'm just using a terry cloth towel. I've obviously used most of this can, and I really like that wax, but I also like about everything that 3M makes. Um, you got this, marine liquid wax that also will work. The uh, liquid wax may be in some cases a little bit easier to apply, but I feel like the, the tins or the cans of the, the heavy paste wax seems to go further, a little better protection. Now they say, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard that if you could apply a coat of wax perfectly, you can only apply up to one perfect thickness. It doesn't really build much beyond that. I don't know if that's true or not, but Generally, you're gonna apply this in circular motions. I'm gonna show y'all how we do that. I'm gonna clamp this camera back on here and show y'all how I do it. And uh, things are really starting to look nice. You can really see that shine on that surface. This wax really gonna seal things up. And we're doing that really nice and heavy. I like to go in circles, then back and forth and round and round. In circles 
back and forth round and round again really go over it more than one time per pass really trying to work that wax in to any little open pores but generally on these repair jobs like one really 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 good coat you can do two sometimes even three if it makes you feel better pretty sure you don't miss any spots i'm going to give that wax several minutes to kind of tack off and then we're going to machine finish that thing and we'll be all done and generally just nice circular motions i'm going to start at the front which is where we started applying the wax then we'll start working my way back we kind of go circular then we go front to back i'm going to go circular front to back what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn this cloth now i'm going to turn it to the other side same deal and you can feel it really start to get smooth when that wax pulls off of there you can really start to see that shine come along i think y'all can see that reflection looking really good all right and y'all the damage was right in here let's see if i can get in damage the original damage was right in this area hope y'all can see that there is a really nice shine developed on that most people especially at a glance where a few feet back again the damage was right there and for most folks and you can see the shine of the light the reflection here it's turned out really nice now i know gel coat repair can be intimidating for a lot of folks um it takes a few special tools but i did this job just with mostly hand tools try to keep it simple and show variation we did the thickened cabocil on this one i uh, did pretty much everything by hand had some requests for that and wanted the finished one so if you haven't seen our prior repair gel coat repair video it's kind of more of a structural repair and it was kind of up underneath the bottom of this boat but um i'm open to taking some suggestions so if y'all have some requests for videos content that you like to see on the channel we are actively trying to grow the channel and i want y'all to know how much i appreciate the support if you can give us the thumbs up the likes the shares if you haven't already subscribed be sure to hit that subscribe button captain joe here with island marine charters down in gulf shores alabama and fish bump tv here on youtube and as always we'll catch you guys next time out